Ladies and gentlemen, meet the real Tara Strong, the Clyde Sparkle herself. How's it going, Twilight? Nice to meet you. Well, um, uh, do you know anything about autism like Asperger's Syndrome? I'm yeah. autistic. Really? How much does Tara know about autism? It's not my business for her to know, but what she may not know are the undertones in My Little Pony. Before we jump into the series, we need to know what autism is, even its symptoms. Success Strategies for Teaching Kids with Autism by Wendy Ashcroft, Ed D., Sue Argiro, and Joyce Keohane says, and I quote, Autism is a complex spectrum disorder characterized by impairments in social interaction, communication, and behavior. The label Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD, an umbrella term, frequently is used to describe a continuum of features ranging from mild to severe. Each person with a diagnosis of ASD has a unique combination of characteristics related to verbal and nonverbal language, communication, interacting with others, social skills, and repetitive, narrow, and restricted interests, behavior. Now let's focus on those three things, communication, social skills, and behavior. With those three concepts in mind, let's put them to the main six. We'll start with Twilight Sparkle. For communication, in the Season 5 opener, The Cutie Map, when the main characters are introduced to Starlight Glimmer, Twilight does a little thing with her wings out of nervousness. Sure, it's for a split second, but it may be synonymous to stimming. Stimming, or self-stimularity behavior, is a repetitive action someone does. Stimming may occur when one feels excited or happy, anxious, or nervous, as seen with Twilight here, overwhelmed, or it's comforting to them. Not only is stimming used for relaxation, but it's used for communication. Stimming can be used to express emotions, therefore it falls into the communication category. For example, a person on the spectrum who does not talk may stim if they're in an uncomfortable place. Twilight was maybe trying to tell her friends she was uncomfortable in a non-verbal, discreet way. Now let's look at our social skills. In the very first episode, Friendship is Magic, we see that she didn't have time to go to her friend's birthday party as she was busy reading her books. Her friends then comment on how odd she is for avoiding her friends. As an autistic person, I related to Twilight Sparkle, especially when I was in grade 6. Friendship is usually difficult for people on the spectrum to grasp. There are many reasons why, but let's focus on the attributes for young Twilight. First reason is her trouble speaking to other ponies. Sure, she does know how to talk to new ponies, but she only introduces herself. Shifting gears a bit to the first Equestria Girls movie where Twilight writes down things to talk about with other students at Canterlot High School. It's crucial that Twilight talks to these students if she wants to run for Princess of the Fall Formal in order for her to get her crown back. This shows that Twilight sometimes has trouble talking to others. Another reason is that Twilight moved away from her friends she had as a child and feared that the same would happen to her. Her fear of moving away from her new friends is seen in the series finale, The Last Problem, even coming full circle with Luster Dawn thinking friendship is a waste of time, just like Twilight in the beginning. We see other characters hold on to the grudge, but most notably the reformed villains like Tempest Shadow and Starlight Glimmer. I used to think that friends don't last for too long, therefore I didn't need friends, fearing friendships would drift away. Now let's focus on Twilight's behavior. We obviously know her interests are reading, hence why she's so incredibly smart. She even goes as far to share her special interests with her friends, as shown in the episode Look Before You Sleep. In that episode, Rarity and Applejack were not getting along, and Twilight started feeling frustrated over their arguments later on, even showing them a rule in her sleepover book. People on the spectrum may use special interests to calm themselves down or to keep them focused. For example, my special interests are music and drawing. I listen to music to help me focus, primarily on schoolwork, and I draw to help get my mind off stressful or depressing things. Sometimes even putting the two together. Listen to music while I draw. So how does Fluttershy communicate? In the first episode, even the first Equestria Girls movie, she very quietly says her name to Twilight Sparkle. 
After seeing Spike, she gets super excited that she forgot about Twilight. She is also seen to communicate better with animals better than ponies. Also, in the episode Keep Calm and Flutter On, she had difficulty saying no to her new friend Discord when he made the flooding at Sweet Apple Acres worse. She asks him to fix it, but only if she never uses her element of kindness against his chaos, then she agrees, but Discord turned the flood into an ice skating ring, you get the idea. But after Fluttershy saw that Discord took advantage of her friendship, she got angry at him. Autistic people sometimes can't say no or are naive to one's manipulation. Nowhere near am I saying Discord is manipulative to the main characters, especially Fluttershy. We'll come back to him later, so let's focus on Fluttershy's innocence for now. National Autistic Society, or NAS, campaign manager Tom Matters says, People with autism can find it difficult to interpret others' motivations, misjudge relationships, and left unsupported many are taken advantage of. Again, Fluttershy is really kind that she decided to give Discord a chance. So kind, she couldn't tell Discord to stop his chaotic antics. From my experience of being a young autistic kid, I had troubles compromising with other peers. I would just go with the flow of what they were doing. Although, I've become more confident in doing this, mostly in groups at school, I still sometimes struggle with saying no to doing some activities. Now we get to her social skills. In the episode, Putting Your Hoof Down, she had a hard time being assertive to her pet bunny Angel and even the ponies at the market. She then sees a pamphlet for someone named Iron Whale that can make her assertive. She goes, gets more confident, then starts taking her assertiveness too far. In fact, she was so mean that she made Pinkie Pie and Rarity cry. By the end of the episode, she learns to find a happy, and not to mention healthy, medium. Autistic people can't be assertive at times, but even then, it may lead to them to be rude to other people. From my experience of trying to be assertive, I would either be too much of a coward, or I would become so angry that I don't mean to hurt other people. Like Fluttershy in the episode, I start feeling sad and start thinking I'm a bad person. Not only that, I sometimes feel ashamed of getting angry or being mean to some people. I don't want to hurt people. So, I relate a lot to Fluttershy in this episode. Before this becomes too emo, let's go into her behavior or her interests. As we all know, her interests are animals. She seems to talk to animals better than ponies. She knows and understands about animals more than she does for ponies. Going back to the first episodes of the show, she knew what was wrong with the manticore while the main characters were finding the elements of harmony. As per usual, Fluttershy's friends were scared of the manticore. They urged her to move away from the manticore, but Fluttershy then discovered that the manticore had a thorn stuck in its paw. Autistic people seem to be more comfortable with pets and animals rather than people. This is because animals do not talk, therefore can't really judge an autistic person. And not to mention, dogs can be very helpful to people with autism. Autistic people sometimes need service dogs because dogs reduce stress and anxiety. Petting or playing with dogs increase oxytocin, a hormone used for reducing stress, and decrease cortisol, a stress hormone. Let's say there's an autistic person who has really bad anxiety. Yes, that also includes social anxiety. They would need a service dog to help them feel a bit more safe and calm. It's also shown in the episode, Hurricane Fluttershy, when she is crying, her animals were there to comfort her, even making Fluttershy a bit more confident. But what if animals don't like an autistic person? You're going to love me! Um, that's not what happens. Uh, let's move on to our next character. Now we get to our lovable pink party pony. So let's see how she communicates. She has something similar to Spider-Man's Spidey Sense. She has something called a Pinky Sense. It's when her body starts doing something random, like her eyes and tail twitching. But like Spider-Man, her senses mean something. In the episode Failing Pinky Keen, it's revealed Pinky's unusual mannerisms can sense dangers in the near future. But how does this relate to autism? Nothing. 
but let's look at her other communications. It should come to no surprise that she is super friendly, but remember in the episode Party of One, she was suspicious of her friends since they didn't attend Gummy's birthday party, and she went depressed and psycho? What she did there was jumping to conclusions, what autistic people do sometimes. Rather than staying calm and patient about the situation, or talking things out, some people with autism just think of reasons on the dot. They may jump to a negative conclusion, like what Pinky did. From my experiences, I would jump to a conclusion and it starts stressing me out, sometimes to a point where I become depressed. I sometimes need to voice my quote-unquote theories just to help me feel better. But Pinky didn't have any pony else to talk to when her friends were planning her birthday party. Yep, that's right. But instead of Pinky being calm and patient, she jumped to the conclusion her friends didn't like her anymore, therefore not really having someone to vent to. Like I said before, Pinky is super friendly. So friendly, she annoyed the heck out of Cranky Doodle Donkey in the episode A Friend Indeed. That was because she didn't know about his personal space. Sometimes, autistic people can become so attached to a person, it can be hard for them to maintain a friendship with the person they don't need to annoy. They may also be unaware of if a person wants or needs to be left alone. But, things all worked out at the end of the episode, as Pinky was responsible for the reunion of Cranky and his now wife Matilda. Now let's focus on her behavior. She loves parties either planning parties or attending parties like the Grand Galloping Gala. She was lucky enough to have found another pony who likes parties as much as she does. Who is this? Well, it's none other than Cheese Sandwich, voiced by Weird Al Yankovic. It's also very important for someone on the spectrum to have a friend that has the same interests as you. It can make conversations with that person less awkward as you both know what to talk about which in turn could help take the relationship further as shown in the series finale where the two party-loving ponies got married and had a child. We should also talk about how supportive her family was when she first found out about her interest. At first, they were confused. Then they started to smile, eventually giving into the party. Families need to know about an autistic relative's special interests in order to connect with each other clearer. Families should be supportive of one's special interests to help the person grow and develop in life, mostly for taking the right classes in school and finding a job that both fit their interests. Also, it was important for Pinky's family to understand her interests in parties to show her she's not strange for liking these things, acting as a safe haven for her. Like how Queen Chrysalis, disguised as Princess Cadence in a Canterlot wedding, insulted Pinky's party planning, calling the setup not really appropriate for royalty. Now we get to my favorite pony, AJ. We all know she is stubborn, even refusing to take a break from working at Sweet Apple Acres. In the episode Apple Buck Season, AJ did not ask her friends for help as she can do the apple harvesting herself. Autistic people don't like asking for help at times as they feel they're weak if they do so. They want to prove themselves of what they're best at, but they really aren't. This one I can relate with at school. Teachers sometimes put these high expectations on students, thinking they'll pass their tests in classes. I sometimes feel if I need help, teachers may just tell me to figure it out myself in order for me to pass. I could go on about how the education system sometimes treats autistic individuals, but that's a whole separate video. Anyways, AJ's social skills. Well, we know she's honest, even to the point where she's brutal about it. So how does that affect how she is towards her friends? In the second Equestria Girls movie, Rainbow Rocks, she told Rarity multiple times that saving Canterlot High School from the Dazzlings or Sirens can be done without caring about the clothes the group would be wearing. AJ then gives in towards the end of the film though. Sticking with AJ and Rarity, or you could say Rare Jack, in Equestria Girls, in the special roller coaster of friendship, Applejack tries to inform Rarity that she is being used by Vignette Valencia and then accidentally hurting Rarity's feelings by telling her she's not special. I've already talked about unintentionally hurting one's feelings, but let's go back to the example in Rainbow Rocks. One reason why I like Applejack is because she's hardworking, sort of like me. 
she keeps focused on the things she's working at. But I sometimes struggle working in school groups if I don't pick the members. Sometimes they'll not focus on the task at hand, and that's kind of when I have to carry the whole project on my back. That basically means I may not talk to the people in the group. But AJ did not stop talking to Rarity. AJ needed Rarity to not horse around while the school was under a magical threat. It's obvious Applejack's interest is apples. It's her name for crying out loud. She talks a lot about apples, even making similes about them, as shown in the episode Yakety Sacks. In the episode Testing Testing 123, AJ says this to Rainbow Dash as she is struggling to study for the Wonderbolts test. And Granny Smith discovered the first Granny Smith in Philadelphia when she was just a filly. AJ says that with having no connection to the Wonderbolts. Some people have pointed out an autistic person's special interests lack any context or meaning, like what AJ did here. I know it's hypocritical for me to say this, so let's move on. We all remember that very famous scene in the show where Strawberry Sunrise downright roasted Applejack. That was in the episode Honest Apple, where AJ didn't understand everything outside her comfort zone of her own personal interests. As I stated before, special interests are used to make one feel calm and comfortable. Individuals with autism need to learn to adapt to other interests, or their behavior will be viewed as odd. Just like what AJ had to learn in that episode, besides everyone can have their own opinions. You may be asking why I'm putting these two together. Well, two reasons. One reason is that YouTuber RL Yoshi already discussed if Rainbow has autism, and I'll leave a link to the video down in the description. But I sort of disagree with him that she has autism, but rather another developmental disorder, like Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder, or ADHD for short. Another reason is I really don't see Rarity having traits or symptoms of autism. She seems to more have symptoms of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, or OCD. Although, along with autism, I have or struggle with OCD. Usually, a person with autism will get diagnosed with other disorders and or mental illnesses. But yes, I showed symptoms of ASD when I was around 2 years old and did not get diagnosed with OCD, anxiety, and depression until I was around 10 years of age, now 16. But let me make this clear that autism is not a mental illness. Sure, there may be similar attributes like being more nervous and sad as compared to someone who does not struggle with those, but autism is more on the developmental side of anything. Let's look at other characters that kind of have symptoms of autism. As I mentioned before, Starlight Glimmer, Tempest Shadow, and Luster Dawn share traits of someone on the spectrum. But now it's time to bring Discord back. Discord displays autistic behavior as he wanted to rule Equestria the way he wanted to rule it, with his chaos that is. But also, he's never had a friend before until he met Fluttershy, even forming an attachment towards her. Another character that seems to display characteristics on the spectrum is Sunburst. He is a little timid and would rather stay inside and read books. When he reunites with Starlight, things become kind of awkward. I may argue that some male fans of the show that are on the spectrum relate a lot to Sunburst, but again, I can't speak for everyone. Pinkie Pie's sister, Mod Pie, and her boyfriend, Mudbriar, are two characters that also show symptoms of ASD. Let's start with Mod. She likes rocks, like, a lot. From writing poetry about them to owning a pet rock. It is definitely clear that rocks are her special interest. Now look at Mudbriar. People have pointed out he's the pony equivalent of Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory, in which people have also pointed out Sheldon is maybe autistic due to the way he acts. I've never watched The Big Bang Theory, but just based on clips I've watched, I do believe Sheldon is on the spectrum, therefore Mudbriar also shows symptoms of being on the spectrum. Now let's move on to Equestria Girls with the next character, Wallflower Blush. In the special Forgotten Friendship, she wasn't known at Canterlot High School, you know, like a wallflower. She then uses a magical artifact, called the Memory Stone, that erases good memories of Sunset Shimmer from her friends, the main cast, and everyone at CHS. Wallflower then gets carried away with the Memory Stone, saying that she'll erase all memories of high school from everyone. After the artifact is destroyed, she then says she used it to get rid of memories where people might see her as odd. 
Sunset then tells Wallflower this. Everyone matters, Wallflower. No matter how insignificant or invisible they feel. This quote in particular means a lot to me and other people struggling with the same thing as Wallflower. It's very important to know that we all have a place in this world. Jumping back into ponies, let's talk about the yak, Yona. In the episode She Saw Yak, she tries to fit in with Pony Society after Sandbar asks her out to the dance at the School of Friendship. She then enters the dance as someone different, but then she starts wreaking havoc by accident. Sometimes autistic people want to fit in, but don't know how to. And instead of realizing people will be there to support you for being different, they change themselves just to fit in, either trying to change their behavior or their interests. But Sandbar tells Yona he likes her, just the way she is, toward the end of the episode. Now to what you guys were waiting for. We all know bronies, right? Of course you do! They pretty much make up the majority of the fanbase. Want to know another community that has more males than females? Autism! That's the special part about My Little Pony. It has storylines and morals that not just autistic people, but practically anyone can relate to. The show even covers topics of depression and anxiety. What also makes this show special is how and why it was created. Lauren Faust created Friendship is Magic to testify female stereotypes that of all girls like pink, wearing dresses, and talking about boys. She wanted a show where females were not all the same. Why am I saying this? Well, I've stated many times in this video that I have autism, but I also did not like Pony at first because I thought it looked too girly for me, somewhat a tomboy, to like. After hearing about this and giving the show a chance, my expectations were completely averted. I realized how relatable the show is and helped me throughout grade 6. The show helped me grow, both as a person and with my art skills. Also not to mention conventions where people can freely be themselves, acting as a safe haven from school or work. I sometimes wish there were more conventions I am able to go to or concerts for musical artists I like because I'm able to be more social in those areas as compared to school. But now we come full circle with special interests. All in all, My Little Pony is a great show that makes one's struggles known. Although I might be criticized for the video I showed in the beginning, it was used to further drive my point home. Although it can be difficult for someone on the spectrum to make friends, they'll find someone that loves and respects them for just who they are, or just sharing common interests. There are also shows that do meh, not so good autism representation. Looking at you, Girl Meets World. It's very important to know about autism in a way that treats them like humans. So do not, and I mean do not, support Autism Speaks. I can tell you why, but this video is already long enough. Autism is a developmental disorder. Therefore, you should be patient with someone autistic, helping them to learn and grow and getting to know them instead of putting them down. It's important to be loyal, generous, kind, honest, and have a sense of laughter to not just people on the spectrum, but to everyone. That is the true magic of friendship. Hey everyone, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is sort of a test run of videos I should make for YouTube if I start monetizing my channel. I would also love to give a special thank you to my friend Grace K for helping me out a bit with the script. She does commentary on her YouTube channel having great jokes and production value. I will be linking her channel down below. Again, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!